Hey folks, David Stewart here. So here's the cover to the new book. It's called The Silver City. Should be out on November 1st, which you can pre-order it now. Don't judge the blurb. I haven't updated the blurb. I did it live, but the link will be down below in the description. I've gotten a lot of positive feelings towards this cover. People tend to like this cover. And so I thought I'd do some videos explaining how I made this cover and some of the techniques that went into it. I did get a question from a very good friend of mine named Jesse White. If you don't follow his channel, um, he's on his channel is called Pursuits of a Polymath. He's a very good comic artist and artist in general, painter and uh, drawer, as you will, and a very nice guy. He asked me how I created this title text because this title text looks really good. So that's what I thought I'd do is just explain um, how I created this title text and. Uh, how you can create it too. And there's a couple things that you have to know when you're gonna create the title text for a book cover or for maybe a magazine cover or something like that. One part is design, graphic design elements, and the other part is just the technique of getting it to look like this, like this bright, uh, pretty silver look here. Uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and demo that. First thing, let's talk about some of the design elements. Notice, first of all, I'm not using the same size font for all the words. All the words are different sizes and indeed, the first letter of the main words, city and silver, are much, much larger to draw attention to them. I also use elements of asymmetry. This is not a symmetrical title um, because asymmetry draws the eyes a lot more. Asymmetry looks more complex um, and it, it just has a different effect on somebody. It looks a little more whimsical. It looks a little more fantastical than something very symmetrical. The more symmetrical uh, an image is, the more symmetrical your title text will be the more serious it tends to look, whereas something like this that's asymmetrical, notice the image is asymmetrical too. So we have an asymmetrical set of, of, of words and then an asymmetrical image where the interest is drawn to the lower right. And that kind of makes everything flow uh, from top to bottom in a way that's a little bit different than if I had gone with a more symmetrical design. So first of all, elements of asymmetry, larger, and smaller fonts, um, the and of are smaller. I also use different weight fonts for these. So the HE and the OF are the bold version of the font, whereas the rest of the fonts are the normal weight or light version of the font. The font that I use, by the way, is Sinsel Decorative, very popular free font for fantasy. Um, you can get it at 1001 fonts and use it for your fantasy things. What's great about this font is that it has a bunch of alternate characters. If you use a capital letter, it produces the alternate swash character. A lot of these swash characters are very um, very old feeling. And then if you use a lowercase letter, it produces the standard character. I have seen this font used a lot. In fact, on a recent live stream, I found someone who used the same font, same color, same text effects and it didn't look as good as my title because it lacked these design elements. It didn't have, say, the big C and the S, maybe the moon in the C, that's also a little design element. Um, and it used all capital letters, so there's all these swashes crossing over each other. It just looked like a mess. There's exactly two alternate characters I use in the main text, this Y, which doesn't even look like an alternate character. It just looks like a fancy Y, but it's the alternate version of Y. The regular Y is more angular, like regular standard Roman font. And then this L, which has this swash that kind of goes underneath the V and looks very nice. Um, the C and the S are alternates, but they're big capital you know, headline letters, so we don't worry too much about that. So the smaller the font is, the heavier it actually needs to be. So your small words should actually be your bold ones and your big words should be your light font. And I see people constantly reversing that. They think the title has to really stand out so they make it bold. No, you don't need to make it bold. Make it normal weight and make all of the little letters bold. Um, and you can think of this in any capacity. If you're making the interior of your book, if you're at a size eight font, it should be a heavier weight font than size 12. One of my favorite free interior fonts, E.B. Garamond, has a size eight and a size 12. Size 12 is for the larger size, the size eight's for the smaller size. And if you look at them, if you make them both size 12, two samples, you'll see that the one that's designed to be seen at eight point is quite a bit heavier. There's a lot more ink on the page. That's because we need more ink on the page to identify the smaller letter. So when you do something like this, use the thinner, more elegant letters. And that's the, the big part of the design. Asymmetry, uh, larger capitals, small words, things aren't the same size, things aren't symmetrical. That looks a lot better than if you were to just type city of silver in like one line or even two lines, very symmetrical. Even when I do something like say the crown of sight, um, crown and sight are symmetrical as far as their size, but the the and of are kind of 
out of the way. You know, they're small and kind of set in different ways to 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 produce a, uh, just a less important effect for the than of. They're less important words. So the important words you make bigger. Um, now let's go ahead and talk about how I actually created the effects for this. Um, so there's a couple of things here in the Photoshop um, document that you may see. There's the title text, there's a bunch of effects on the title text, and then there's some stuff that's on top. There's some flares. And I wanna show all of those elements to really show this particular technique. So I made a new document to just demonstrate a new title. I think this will be the title for the next one. And it's called Tyrant's Gallo. Um, so I'm actually going to do the same thing. I'm going to have a T. I'm going to make the capital letters separate objects. And then uh, Tyrants. And then uh, Gallo, G. Gallo lines. Tyrants Gallo. So that's going to be book two. Now if we just line it up like this, you know, it doesn't look that bad. But we could make it look a whole lot better by... Um, sizing things correctly. Let's shrink those two down and we will um, size these two up. Put up that chain link, make sure that they don't get stretched. Don't ever stretch your fonts. It's one of the worst things you can do. Now for design, um, maybe we want to take the T and we want the T to kind of hang over the Y a little bit. And uh, that'll that'll look pretty good. Let's make these even bigger, even more pronounced. Okay, so the T is going to hang over the Y a little bit. We can size this up a bit to kind of fill up a little bit more space. Let's also uh, so bring this one in so that they're both a little bit bigger. There we go. So the T kind of hangs over the Y. That looks pretty good. And then we can actually like say maybe the G goes over the T like this. This has a cool effect, and then we can have the A kind of sit on that little shelf on the G. Um, notice I don't use a lot of swashes. I haven't put a bunch of swashes, swash characters in here. Uh, we can maybe put one in. You notice the L will go, you just make it a capital, it goes underneath the O. To me, that looks a little odd unless you're going to do two L's like that, but that looks like too much swashes. So I'd probably keep the L's normal and maybe make the O the, the interesting one. The W you can see has crazy swashes on it, so I'm going to leave that one off. Um, you could maybe make one character in the upper one, you know, do this. Maybe the R might look nice, but to me that, that looks totally asymmetrical and out of place. Maybe just the Y, have that interesting Y, but even then maybe you don't want any of it. Maybe you want an A, nah, you can experiment, maybe a T. I don't really like any of them. I might make the S. There we go. An O and an S. That's our that's our points of interest. Keep it light on the on the swashes if you want it to actually look good. All right. So now we have the design elements are here. We're missing things like of and the. We could put a the tyrant's gallo if we wanted to, like a small the. We would just duplicate like what we did here with the big T and the bold H E. So tyrant's gallo. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just group those together, make a make a group out of them. Then all of our effects that we apply are gonna apply universally. Uh, so first thing, let's do bevel and emboss. When you're doing something like bevel and emboss, uh, this is gonna create that that effect that looks like it's chiseled, like you know, cut in stone. Um, the size and the direction. You know, the size is gonna be where the bevel starts. As long as you crank this, the size up so that it starts in the middle, you're gonna have this look correct. The depth is how pronounced it is. You can just crank the, the, the depth up quite a bit to, to make it visible. Um, and you can always turn it down a little bit later on. Gloss contour, the standard gloss contour that when you, when you do this is just gonna be like linear, which is gonna look like that. That's very kind of dull. Um, I actually used a ring and it creates this very, very glossy effect, as you can see. And we can even adjust the light source to get a little bit different gloss effect. As we move the light source around, um, it'll produce different hot spots. And you can, you know, see, I like this. This looks pretty good like this. Um, or maybe we want like a little bit, maybe something like that. You know, you could just play around with this to get like just the right light sourcing to produce the exact kind of effect that you want. Um, so right now I'm getting a very hot 
part of the T. And they want to just that would be a little bit different. So this looks pretty good. Now another thing that I like to do here is I like to add a stroke around the outside to define it. And I like to use a gradient. And I like to use a gradient over, say, a, um, a picture background. So if I pull a picture out here, just, uh, I mean, it doesn't even matter what we what we use. Here, let's use, these, let's just use this lightning here. Um, and we'll put it here. And we'll just very quickly make it, let's, yeah, let's place it. And we'll just very quickly, you know, darken it and um, colorize it to see like a blue and just desaturate it quite a bit. So that's going to get that black and white effect that we had there. Okay. Um, if we want to size up any of this stuff, now is probably a good time to do that. Um, and if we want to work on any of the kerning, now is probably a good time to do that. So right here, there's notice there's a big space. There's a lot of space in here. And so what we may want to do here is we'll, we'll pop out this and the spacing between these two characters, we may want to like really shrink that down. We may want to go like into the negative, like negative 100. So that, that apostrophe is really close. We really want that apostrophe to disappear um, and go to like something very small. And that's a little too small. We'll go to about negative 50. And there we go. That looks pretty good. Um, and the whole point here is just to really shrink that down so that the apostrophe goes away. That's much better kerning. It's called kerning, folks. Same thing here. I may want to just shrink that kerning right there. Um, 50 is a little too, too wide. Go down to zero. Um, likewise, if you want the R and the A to run together, you can you can shrink that down to zero. Um, in fact, we should probably shrink the kerning down in general. So um, let's just make all that go down to zero. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom. Select it all, and we're going to go down to about zero. That looks a lot better. Then we can size those up. A little bit. We have a good working sense of asymmetry here. Slide this G over slightly. Get that up. Bam! Now we have a really good looking title font. Look at that. And it actually has an element of symmetry because the S and the W line up quite nicely. Tyrants Gallo. Oh, I like that. Now we want to get this effect that we have here where we have a texture and we have these sparkly bits. So it's almost there, but we got to add something to it. So what we're going to add. We're gonna go back to the bevel and emboss. We're gonna add a texture. Now, as soon as I add this texture, you're like, "Well, that looks like poo poo." You gotta find a more subtle texture to it, and then from there we need to mess with it. Like this is a good one. This one looks kind of metallic, and as you mouse over these, it'll pop up like marbled, lined, which looks bad. You know, craft paper is very strong. I think craft paper might be what I used. Like this one tends to look okay. What is this? Homemade paper. Fibers, dark gray flex, crep, charcoal. Uh, what's oil pastel? That looks a little bad. Brush pen. Mm. This one looks pretty good for this one. All right, metallic flex. So we'll do that. Now from here we can really play with it. As you turn the depth up, it just kind of takes over the effect. So you, if you turn the depth off or go into negative, it, it inverts it. So we want it to turn it up to where we can see the texture, but where the texture is not overwhelming. So right about there is probably good. And from there, we can make it a bigger or smaller version of the texture. So let's turn up the, the scale just a little bit. So we're a little more into it. Now that's going to add some good interest here. We can also turn on the contour here and get this kind of Gaussian. We can do a ring contour for the texture uh, or linear. This is pretty standard maybe. I think I like the Gaussian one. Sawtooth is going to be really harsh. Ring kind of works. Double ring. Maybe I think there's a rolling slope. Yeah, rolling slope looks pretty good too. Rounded steps. I think I like that double ring um, for the 
for the contour. And you can even anti-alias it, which will make it look, uh, let's add a little bit of blur to it. And then the, the scale and the depth a bit, bring it up. And as we zoom in a little bit, you'll see it looks a little bit different once we zoom in. That's a little closer to what we want, but I think that texture might be a little bit too strong once I get in a little closer here. Uh, maybe I'll just adjust the light just a hair. Texture, let's dial that depth down a bit. There we go. Now the stroke I add in because that, that tends to make the font just a little bit heavier. Um, and I can actually change this color a bit. You can make the you can make the, the stroke heavier or lighter, uh, but I find it just helps to kind of define the image. You can also make it more opaque um, or less opaque, depending on what you want. I kind of like it a little bit transparent, so there's a blending with the background of this of this uh, texture here. And again, I'm not crazy about this light, so I'm gonna adjust the light a little bit because I don't like this bright T there. There's a little That's a little closer to what I want right there. So this looks pretty interesting here. There's a lot of interest. There's a, some texture. There's a, some shine to it. Um, there's just a, a lot of cool, a lot of cool stuff going on here. Yeah, I like it like that. I think and it looks good. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty good to start. Now keep in mind, in, in context, there's going to be a little bit more quality here. If we don't like as much highlight, we can always turn the highlights down or up. Um, I like them pretty bright in general. And we can always turn up the size of the um, of the chisel to make it more pronounced or less pronounced. And that's probably that's probably perfect right there. Same thing with the depth. We can make it more pronounced or less pronounced. I think it's perfect like that. Okay. Let's add the, the final bits to really make this pop which is gonna be some shiny bits. I'm gonna minimize that group. I'm gonna create a new layer. Um, and we're gonna make this layer uh, black. And we're gonna set it to screen. So now we can see it. Then what we're going to do is we are going to go to filter, render, lens flare. We're going to create a couple lens flares now because this is silver i'm going to say i'm going to do the 105 prime one i'm going to turn the brightness down a little bit now you can always turn the brightness down sort of afterwards by you can't really see what you're doing you're just going to grab it and move it now this is the this is like that shine off of uh like a nice bright spot so you create a nice shine right there and that's gonna create that shine effect. And I may go here, you can always kind of alter where the light source is to get like the shine, the shining places where you want them to be. Uh, kind of end up there, I think it looks good. Cancel, oh, I kind of like where it was. So, because we can always add a couple of special shiny bits later. So let's put a shine bit there. And we'll just copy paste the layer and we can put another one, say right there. And for that one, we can actually shrink the, the layer down a little bit, just same kind of reduces the brightness and maybe put it like right there. I think that looks good. So that's simple. And for those, and apply, put them in a group. And then from there, you can turn the opacity of those up or down to kind of highlight the, the bright glow in them. Now it's starting to look more like what we wanted. The last thing we're gonna do here, our last couple things is uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna create another new layer and we're also gonna um, fill that layer with black and we're gonna set it for now to screen. But we're actually gonna use Color Dodge to create the effects that we want. Um, I might actually put those above here. I think I like those on top. So for this, we're gonna go to uh, Filter Lens Flare. Oops. Filter render a lens lens flare and oops render lens flare 
And we're gonna put this wherever we wanna create a hotspot, probably on the T. Okay, and we'll, let's hide. <coughs> let's hide this group for now and make it a little bit easier to move stuff around with our mouse. I'm gonna create, create like a hotspot about here. And then from here, we're gonna change this to color dodge. And uh, then we're gonna turn the opacity way down. And we can just use that to create some, some hot spots wherever we want them. Um, so this one's a little big. Let's actually shrink the layer down a little bit. Create a nice little hot spot maybe right there. Something like that. You can see it just kind of creates a little hot spot. And you can use these, you know, wherever you want, uh, just by shrinking them down like this. In fact, I'm probably going to probably going to re-render this to get uh, the effect that I actually want. I'm going to put it in the middle. Render lens flare. I'm going to turn this brightness down quite a bit and put it over here. That way, it's just you're never going to see the edge, edge of it. And go to color dodge. And now it's a nice little hot spot that we can just put wherever we want. We could put it here to enhance that lens flare, put it wherever we want. And if we want to make as many of these as we want, we just can copy paste the layer. So let's, let's think about there's going to be a cool hot spot there. And we'll put a hot spot maybe on that L. Duplicate it, then put one on the T. Um, just anywhere that you, you think might be fun to have an, an extra little flare, an extra little bit of flare there, like maybe right there. And maybe we'll put one more on the R. Uh, now these look really super bright, but uh, from here we can just group them and we can adjust the entire um, opacity of the entire group like that. Or we can go through and find each individual one and turn down turn down the opacity. So the one on the S maybe is a little bit bright. Um, so we just turn that one down a little bit. And the one on the T is probably a little bit bright. So let's turn that one down just a little bit too. You know, maybe we want one like right here. Um, on the intersection and we want that one maybe where I put that one right there that would be you know a little brighter and um, that's how we're going to create those effects and just turn the just turn it up or down and it's going to brighten it up Add the two bright lens flares, and there you go. That's how I created this. Um, let's go ahead and darken this image so we can really see, you know, the the background image, um, which is just whatever. Let's um, let's quickly darken this a bit so we can see what we're looking at. Bam! All right. So now it looks nice and bright and crisp here. Last bit we're gonna add to make this really pop off um, pop off the back here. We're just gonna add some drop shadows. Um, I like to do a color burn drop shadow because it's more subtle and I like to make it kind of big. And then I like to do a regular drop shadow too. So now you can see now it really just pops off the back. And that is how you can design some great book cover text that looks professional, looks shiny, really gonna stand out on Amazon or anywhere else that you wanna use it. There's more little things that I could do to like really make this um, make this look super special. Uh, but for now, I think this is actually a pretty good, pretty good version of what I would do here. Uh, and I think it looks pretty good. So I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Jump on my mailing list, by the way. Uh, stew, or go to dvspress.com slash um, list, and you can just kind of pop on my mailing list, and you'll probably get a free copy of this book. Um, so check it out, and I'll, or not this book, but 
this book, The City of Silver, this will be book two, will be Tyrant's Gallow. So um, anyway, hopefully this has been informative. I know this is a, a little bit more in-depth video, um, but if you follow those steps, I think you can get to some really, really good looking text. And notice I do a lot of experimentation along the way just to figure out what's going to look perfect for whatever text um, I have here. Uh, you can even, you could do even more effects if you want to. Just as, as a one last little thing, let's say that I, I don't want it to be silver. Let's say I want it to be, to be gold. So all I have to do is create a cover overlay like this and just create like a gold color that uh, now it's gold my friends you know look at that beautiful gold text you can do this with a gradient too if you wanted to have that extra depth but notice just with a color overlay it looks great um, maybe you want it to be blue blue looks kind of interesting I would actually choose a lighter blue like that I think that looks pretty cool um, the color of your text will communicate some things because if it's like pink or purple kind of says like young adulty uh, maybe urban fantasy you know, young adult fantasy, dark fantasy, maybe. Um, but if we have something like gold, it says like high fantasy, or silver can be high fantasy. So there you go. Now it's a now it's the gold version. Now it's the gold version. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.